Liverpool have won their first title in 30 years. Congratulations to them, their fans. It's been a long wait. It's all over the news. They dominated the EPL and are rightfully champions. But there's something many of you don't know. Former Toronto Tobago striker Kenwin Jones was almost a Liverpool player. I bet you didn't know that. And on two occasions. But there's one particular occasion where Kenwin Jones was practically in the door at Liverpool. And an incident which Kenwin Jones will speak about today explains in great detail about what happened and why he was not able to make that move. The reason may surprise you greatly. But uh, I suppose one incident with, where Kenwin Jones got hurt, David James came out. Guilty that's plagued David James all his career. Yeah. You know, occasional just, rush of blood. Yeah, just a total misjudgment. I hope that's not a serious injury for uh, for Kenwin Jones because he's, he's just come back from a from a broken wrist and the last thing he needs is, is to be uh, on the treatment table over the summer. In that situation, I got injured for Trinidad Tobago. And honestly, nobody cared. It was that simple. Interesting. You know, as, as you're speaking yeah. about that injury, that is, uh, but go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I know. Well, it, I mean, I might probably answer the question you're going to ask, but yeah, a little sorry. recap on that moment. Mm -hmm. I got injured. Um, if you look at the game, I didn't have a stretcher to take me to the dressing room. I walked. I walked to the dressing room. I remember when I that. Got in the dress yeah, when I got to the dressing room, I was crying my eyes out. Not the fact that I was going injured is because. You know, on the 1st of July, I was going to Liverpool. That's why I was crying. So at the time, it was really off. And then during that period, the then um, General Secretary of the TTFF at that time mm -hmm. came in the dressing room and he had an argument with the equipment manager. And again, when you look at professional sports, I'm injured in the dressing room with the equipment manager, wow. not a medical person. I mean, they were equipment manager, right? Mm. So I'm there sitting, crying my eyes out, and he comes in, and his biggest issue was the fact that Trinidad and Tobago wearing white pants. Oh, wow. And England also wearing white pants. When, and I, in that moment, I was thinking to myself, first of all, we sold ourselves out because we played that game at home in white t-shirts, which we have never done. We're at home, we're red. Yep. Red, black shorts, white socks or red socks or however they change it over the years, but it's always red and black. We sold ourselves out and had England playing red, number one. Number two, we were printing Trinidad and Tobago jerseys, which were Adidas at that time, and placing English names at the back of it. Wow. So that is the level of our patriotism. We don't actually care. We sold ourselves out just for the fun fear of having a game like that. And that is crazy. I always tell people at no point in time, you will never see an Englishman have a t-shirt representing any of their national teams in whatever sport. And they will put a Welsh name in the back of it, or a Scottish name in the back of it, or an Irish name in the back of it. They will never do it. Ever, 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 ever. So that spoke to me at that moment about our level of understanding, patriotism, and also just the focus sometimes in, in all matters from people in the organization. That, that right there needs me to know, well, you know what? You're just a pawn in the scheme. Then. Nobody don't really care. <laughs> you know, they, they're about their business. So that time was, it was, it was, it was, it was eye opening more than anything else. It's very interesting how you brought that part up because I was going to ask, but you actually I actually learned something. I mean, I, I usually pride myself on having a, a good grasp of events, but you know, 
I was going to ask you about the injury, but you know, the, the surrounding events, you know, not having a, I remember seeing that game and I remember the, I was sitting behind 10 English fans who were louder than most of the stadium, which was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> and you, I remember when you were, yeah, and I was, uh, I was the only one taunting them. Um, the only thing that annoyed them was I had an Argentina wrist on because the Trinidadian fans mm -hmm. wouldn't annoy them enough. So, you know, they, you know, yeah. and uh, I saw when it happened, the entire thing from a fan's perspective and now I'm even more annoyed because the fans were annoyed. They saw what was going on and mm -hmm. then they went back to the game, you know, as expected. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the repercussions, you know, there were only rumors as fans about the Liverpool transfer and the, the implications mm -hmm. of the injury, how it may have affected mm -hmm. you for the rest of your career. I know Stone John had a similar injury as well. Um, yeah, he had quite a few bad ones. Yeah, and then, you know, it, you know, it, the Liverpool thing was always something. It, the, the, the social media thing wasn't big back then. So you had to really dig and go mm -hmm. online. You know, not everybody had access to cable. So, you know, that... Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know... What, okay, so you've, you're injured. Was the Liverpool thing, you know, 100% confirmed and it stopped because of the injury? Oh, 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 oh yeah, that was that was 100%. Wow. Well, that, that, that was the first one, actually. So at that time, that was 100% because of doing, you know, like social media wasn't that big, but me being on the inside, being the player and the agent and all that stuff, you know, everything was everything was done, more or less. Um, we just had to wait for the window to reopen. Um, if um, people can throw their minds back to that game, the, f the first person that came to me on the floor was Gerard. Wow. I ran past Rio Ferdinand, um, I mean, the goalkeeper, but when I was done, the first person that came was Gerard because obviously I was going to link up with them. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, so when that happened, I went to, uh, I basically went to do a scan and I was having some hope because when I did the scan, you know, the doctor at that time told me, um, you know, it looks like I have an old injury and I'll probably be out for like six weeks. So I was like, six weeks? Yes, you know, that's the thing. You know, I mean, we, we in June. By the time I get ready, come back, I can still join preseason before the league starts, blah, blah, blah. Uh, everything will be okay. And they give me a cane and, and an old knee brace. And I remember when I got back to England and Sunderland, um, the physio saw me and, you know, they started laughing. They was like, oh, will you come with this cane? And I mean, literally a cane, like an old wooden cane. Not even, you know, those medical canes, they give you that uh, the same material as the crutches. It was an old wooden cane and knee brace. So immediately when they saw me, you know, the physio, the head physio starts scratching his head. They gave me a knee brace and some, some crutches because I didn't have crutches. Um, and then they took me to the scan. And I'm there still having hope because I remember the doctor in Trinidad told me, yeah, six weeks. So I'm there having hope. After a half hour, you know, I came out the, the MRI and the physio was there. I literally seen his eyes well up, full of water. He turned red. His hands were on his head. I'm like, well, well what happened? Uh, somebody died or something? What was going on? And he's like, no, what did that doctor tell you? Because I brought the report back. He's like, what did that doctor tell you six weeks? An old injury and all of that. And I'm like, yeah, that's what he said. So, you know, I'm still happy. And then he's like, the amount of damage you have in there, everything is third degree. So I did my medial, my MCL, third degree on that. I did my ACL, third degree on that. I did my, is it my PCL or LCL? I did third degree on that. I also had some bone bruising, third degree on that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this is going to be an entire year for you. And right then and there, you know, my, in, in the moment, my head dropped, I uh, felt a little sad because I know that, you know, my opportunity there at that time was gone. But apart from my family members and a few teammates, friends of mine, um, 
I had nobody from the Federation that was concerned. And then injured and, and all that type of stuff. And then came out, Mr. Warner had the audacity to say that, you know, he, um, they wrote me a letter and that's why Roy Keane came out and said what he said because in that situation there, I'm in the gym, I'm in the pool, I'm doing eight to five, you know, trying to rehab myself. And when I go home, I'm doing a little bit more rehab as well. And nobody from the Federation didn't even contact the club to find out how things are going. None of that type of stuff. So in that moment, yes, he was angry. And me and him had a lot of candid conversations during that time of players and themselves and clubs and organizations and that type of stuff. And for me, again, like I'll say that, that was very eye-opening because I felt the loneliness in that time that, you know what, this is the place that I call home. And nobody really cares. Wow, you know, this is, uh, you know, in my final, one of my projects at university was, you know, uh, the sport, uh, sports psychology. Mm -hmm. And in one of the advanced courses, you know, they spoke about, you know, the, 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 the injury and the recovery model uh, when you have injuries. And obviously, we were speaking about elite athletes. And, you know, you read about cases, but, you know, I never thought I would be speaking to one of our national players mm -hmm. and, and, and seeing a real life case mm -hmm. because on the surface, you know, we heard about the injury. Yes, it was terrible. And, you know, knowing the details and the mental anguish it must have caused, you know, being misdiagnosed, that isolation, it's something that a lot of people don't pay attention to in recovery. Um, the physical part is one part, but it's mentally taxing. And, um, you know, we, we analyze a lot of players, Ronaldo as well, uh, the Brazilian Ronaldo. And, you know, you experiencing this, now that I understand mm -hmm. the great... I knew it would have been bad. I knew that. But I had no idea. Now that I know the details of it, it must have been, you know, mentally taxing. And it had to show a lot... You had to show a lot of mental toughness to, you know, continue and come back. Which... Yeah, yeah of course. Because at uh, that point in time, you know, um, the prime of, of my football youth. Um, and stuff is going on and I'm not a part of it, you know? So I had to refocus. I had a lot of good days. I had a lot of bad days as well during that recovery time, trying to channel my mind into waiting to get him back fit. And then I had a, also a lot of anxiety in, will my leg be the same? Would they go again? Because they say when you get injuries like that, the strength of your, your body goes down immediately by 5 or 10%. So I'm thinking, you know, how long a career I would have, um, would I be able to come back in the immediate and play and stay and, and be able to function because I'm now not original anymore. I had to do surgery, surgery, something that I, I never liked, and that was the only surgery that I ever did. But, um, you know, it, it, it was a taxing time in, in all corners, but again, all you can do at that point in time is take one day at a time. Deal with the day as it comes because, you know, you can have a good two weeks of going in, being focused, you know, getting through your rehab, your work and all that type of stuff. And then the next week is just a daunting factor. And a lot of times with injuries with players, sometimes they have a long stretch where they have to do rehab. And during that time, you probably pick up with an infection or something went wrong that even further delays the time that you're supposed to be back. So you have to deal with all that type of stuff. You know, um, mentally it is tough. I'm not saying it's the same situation, but it has people that might lose their jobs and might be out of their jobs for, I don't know, for some time. So you're going to get three motions of not being able to get back out there to be able to do the things that you have to do. Again, I'm not saying that losing your job and being injured is the same thing, but the same circumstance, but the, you know, the, the feelings and the thoughts about actually getting back to what you, you want to be doing, you know, all of that is involved. And it's, uh, it's something that is mentally taxing on, on, on anybody. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit blown away because, you know, I had my questions planned and so on. And, you know, to get some insight like this is, you know, I appreciate that you're, you're sharing this information because... It never, go, it never goes... Yeah. It never goes according to plan. 
yeah, yeah. That's how life is designed. Yes, yes. And which is good. You have to embrace the change because, um, as I said before, you know, mm-hmm. I, I wish we had this discussion before because, uh, you know, there's a lot of young athletes out there who don't have that support system in place at, at, at the younger ages, at the university mm-hmm. level. You know, I worked with a lot of the uh, UTT footballers. Um, even um, when I was doing some stuff at Central FC, mm-hmm. a lot of the younger guys and, you know, you see how these things affect players and, you know, yes, they get the physical diagnosis, but the mental aspect, I see a lot of them, a lot of them are from my area and, you know, it's, it's tough, it's tough. And, you know, it, fans, it's, it may be, and, you know, maybe I'm being optimistic here, but the understanding and elaboration on the topic and education, I guess, it may not change it overnight, but you know, it will make people think twice when they make some comments sometimes. But we know it's a difficult task, but... Well, it depends on the number. It's the number of people you're talking about, because generally, I mean, you know, like anything else, you, you go to the grocery, you buy it, and you come back the next time, it's not on the shelf, you have to wait for it to come back and stuff. Each yeah. player has their shelf life, and so, you know, for us, for, for, for the people on the outside that are just going to games and just wanting the beginning and the end, like I say, the middle of a player's journey and the thing that he has to go through just to be able to perform, you know, it's inconsequential, to be honest. Wow, you know, uh, this this is, I actually, uh, I'm a little bit blown away, but um, just to end off that topic, before we move on to the lighthearted stuff, um, I'm, this is, uh, <laughs> because this is quite interesting, but, uh, when, when, when you had the actual injury, going back to the game, what did Steven Gerrard say to you, if you can remember? Oh, well, he just asked me if I'm all right, if I'm going to be all right, because at that point in time, the diagnosis on the field, you would know the extent of the injury. So he was more concerned if I was going to be all right, because I guess that would have been, or at that time, there would have been the chance for me and him to, to speak about obviously trying to sell me the Liverpool dream, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that, that was, I think, more of his concern at that time because it could have been that I turned out, I turned out just getting a stamp on my court or something from the goalkeeper and down and, you know, be ready to play or probably come out the game and be better in a, in a couple of weeks or something. But, you know, that wasn't the case. And for the business at hand, you know, there was a general concern. So, I mean, it's, it's, it was part of the process. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm also happy that I went through it because the, 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 the period of going through that injury helped me to, you know, reach places in myself mentally that, you know, I didn't know that I had, to be honest. And it helped me for all different types of situation in life. Wow, that is that is truly a story. You know, honestly, uh, Kenwin, I'm not messing around. That could be a, a little nice autobiography there, you know. That's that's, that's yeah, the journey yeah, of Kenwin. I, I, <laughs> I don't think I have the need to. Yeah, yeah I know. You I never know. know in the future. Yeah, you never a, know. It's a personal, a personal choice. choice. You never, you never know. know. Just a reminder, everyone, for more episodes, be sure to head over to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more updates, interviews, and content.